Wow. The Blackpool Philharmonic Club. It's been 15 years since I performed here, and what immediately strikes me is it hasn't changed a bit. The Working Men's Clubs and Institutes Union was formed in 1862 by teetotal Reverend Henry Solly. The clubs were set up as an alternative to pubs, focusing on more wholesome sports and games. But within a decade, drinking joined these activities and the mould was cast for clubs for the next 150 years. Clubs grew from strength to strength after the war and um, up until about the middle of the 1970s where there were over 4,000 clubs that we know about. One and six, sweet 16. Follow me. This was my, I suppose what you could describe as a bijou dressing room. <laughs> Your own fan heater for those cold winter months in Blackpool. And of course, every singer's very own personal ashtray. Since their heyday, the number of clubs has nosedived to just over 2,000 and attendance is dwindling. I know when I was coming here and I was performing here, I remember the place being absolutely packed to the rafters. Those times changed since yeah, then? Those, those days are gone now from when you were appearing here. You could, yeah. uh, there would be queues up outside around the block. You hear it to my heart. There were 32 clubs in Blackpool, there are now down 15, which is a, to me, it's a disaster really. It's not just Blackpool, it's everywhere in the country. If the club world dies out, what do you think we lose as a, as a society? A social gathering place. You come into a club, you sit in a concert room or a, a room, you don't know the person next to you, within five minutes you're talking to them because everybody seems so friendly. In, let's say, 1972, there were probably around six million people going to clubs on a regular basis. And by regular, I mean for some men that was every night and twice at the weekends. Already there were signs that they were becoming unpopular with the younger generation and they weren't recruiting the younger generation to take the place of the older ones. Well, it's not all doom and gloom, you know. This is one of the clubs that I played at as well. This is thriving at the moment, and we're going to go inside and find out why. The Bloomfield Club is just a mile from the Philharmonic, and yet it has 1,200 members and a three-year waiting list. Located at the centre of a large residential area, they've gone back to the roots of the clubs using games, social activities and entertainment to attract the working men and, more importantly, their wives. Originally, women were only allowed into the clubs on special occasions, for concerts and at weekends. But it was with the arrival of the Sex Equality Act of 2010 that, by law, they had to be allowed to become full members. Hello, Jim. You all right, Russell? Nice to see you again, Cop. And I believe you have something interesting to yes. show me. This is the book, all the artists that appeared in 1997. And as you can see, there you are. Oi, up. Russ Watson. I'll tell you what, Jim, that was a bargain price, pal. <laughs> what do you attribute to the success of, of, of this club? Well, I think the bar prices are right. The uh, entertainment which we put on is first class. We've got to uh, put on something which will attract the, the younger element. Uh, it just seems to be that the social clubs aren't their scene. But again, uh, to join the local football team with football teams within the club, with snooker teams, with bowls teams, uh, the, the funds are there for them. With so many clubs struggling, they've certainly got their work cut out to ensure the tradition of the working men's clubs continues. To survive, they're going to have to move with the times. The clubs that are struggling are taking note and uh, trying to do something about that and trying to change their image to become more modern and to adapt to the society that we live in in the 21st century. Well, it's been a real trip down memory lane for me today. This is where I, I served my apprenticeship as an entertainer. It put me in great stead for my career. Is this the end of the working men's club era? I sincerely hope not, because it's a great British tradition and hopefully long may it continue.